If you're angry when you're playing a game, does your character become angry? And perhaps a more interesting question, do you become happy when your character is happy? As I mentioned in my episode about frames, bleed is a motion that both we and our characters feel. Either it passes from us to our characters or from our characters to us. If you recall, bleed in is whenever emotions that you feel as a person affect your character, either the mood that you bring to the table or your own personal reaction to events in the game. Bleed out is whenever something that happens to the character affects you personally outside of the game. I think we've all seen this at least in minor ways in games. The first and most obvious one to me is frustration. If there is something that a character is having difficulty overcoming, both the character may feel frustrated as well as a player. Also anger, especially at a, let's say for example, a conflict with another player. The character may feel angry at that character just as a player may feel angry at the other player if the game isn't designed around that type of conflict or it wasn't seen coming. Another thing that might be very obvious is an emotional trigger. Something that triggers the player may also make that player feel the same emotion their character would feel in that situation as well. But these don't always have to be bad things. Your character may become happy at a victory or elated at some event in the game, and the player may still feel that and walk away from the table with that same emotional response. As well, there are negative emotions that can come up in games that some players want to have and they want to experience that through their character's eyes. There seems to be a connection between emotional investment and bleed. Emotional investment seems like it's required for bleed out and often caused by bleed in as the emotions that you feel, your character now feels, and it makes you more invested in the game around you. For some people, and in certain situations, people will avoid bleed as much as possible, either using humor as a shield or simply creating a stronger frame to separate them from their character. You'll see this come up more and more in whenever sex is brought into games because people don't want the people at the table, for example, to think that what their character is feeling is necessarily what they are feeling. And it is actually very curious that people will use this around sex, but not around violence. Perhaps that is indicative of our culture and the way we view things. Or maybe it's indicative of the fact that we've all had sex, but we've not all had violence in our lives. There's also a strong connection between deep immersion and bleed. Bleed can only really happen with a weak frame, a weak distinction between you and your character, which seems like it's very important to be immersed deeply within that character. So why would we want bleed in our games? Well, like the discussion on comfort zones, some players simply want to have a different emotional experience at the table. Also, as a GM in, my, in the past, I've always found that whenever I emotionally reached the players is when I felt that I was doing my job best as a GM. So if you wanted to include this, how would you make your players bleed? Well, bleed in is kind of obvious. You can use things that are emotional triggers to the character or things that they feel very strongly about. You can also use a more direct approach, like Flower from Mara has players actually admit their own personal regrets within the game. Bleed out, I'd say you need investment in the game, very important. As well, making significant decisions and put the player in the character's head could certainly lead to this, but most important, I think, is to have deeply powerful emotional events within the game. Like comfort zones, bleed isn't for everyone, and you should never put a player through an experience that they didn't sign up for and don't want. If you're interested in learning a little bit more about this, I'd recommend an episode of the Jankcast, which I've linked below, and I would also suggest talking to your players before you ever include anything like this in your game. Links for blackboards and minute games are on screen and below. Video replies and comments are very welcome, and if you're interested in playing a game that I've talked about, I would like to try to open this up on Google+. There is a link for the notes as well. Thanks for watching, and I hope that every game that you have is better than the last.